let me take you back to the 1980s and a young me went to bed every night listening to Tron on a cassette tape about a software engineer transported inside the software world of a computer and me then daydreaming of the possibilities of that really occurring in the future. Fast forward to 2021 and I get to experience Narita Boy about a young man entering the inner works of a computer and soon embarking on a journey to restore the creator's memories. And when you fire up the game and pass an intro worthy of any arcade game in the 1980s or 90s, you will experience a retrofuturistic 2D pixel metrovania game with a deep story and aesthetics that give you flashbacks to playing one of the more famous ones like Castlevania or Another World. The game takes us back to the glory days of the 1980s and if you were not born then you just have to trust me on this. But the creator has lost his memories, and the one responsible for this is only known as him. The creator is one that had created a video game console that had a flagship title called Narita Boy. So when him enters the world of the software and he deletes the creator's memories, a young boy is one night transported through the world of the living to the world of the motherboard code and the digital kingdom. The first couple of minutes with this game is not even a platforming game filled with fighting, it's just you experiencing the awesome background story and the introduction to the world of Narita Boy. The game starts slow so you can be amazed by the in-depth story and graphics before you are even handed a weapon, the mighty techno sword. You are a human child in a 20 pixel costume that enters a world of binary code of the creator. This will not gain you any advantages, instead there will be things in this world that really, and I mean really want to cause you to vanish in a cloud of pixels. Some dialogues are a bit programming oriented, so if you're not used to that, it can be a bit hard to get a grip on it, but it won't affect your full playthrough. Explore the Neo Retro Dimension as you traverse the three houses of the Trichroma and in case it all sounds a bit confusing I can promise you that it all makes sense as you play the game. Think of it like an ancient energy that you can use to heal or empower yourself. It can even be used to call on the legendary Trichroma dudes, powerful programs ready to sustain you in fights. Your new arch enemy, simply known as him, have stallions as they are called, the foes from the horror dimension that terrorize the digital kingdom. And with a techno sword in your hand, your journey to slay them has now begun. The developer studio Koba has chosen the path of upgrading and learning one skill at a time, so as you progress further in the game, new skills are added to your way of fighting, and even the bosses you will fight have some part that matches your newfound skill. A way of letting you practice your skill and master them in a controlled environment. You might think that the first foes or bosses you fight is a bit exploitable if you are comfortable with metrovanias, but everything is carefully planned out so you never feel overwhelmed while taking on an enemy. You will have to take on some bosses multiple times, but it's all about finding the patterns and how to avoid them, although their HP pool can be a bit too high, so some fight takes longer than it should have since you are busy dodging more than you are actually attacking. All enemies are creatively introduced the first time you meet them with a brilliant floppy disk of them. Controls are really consistent in this action adventure and it's easier to die of a jump leading into a disastrous dash than being slain by a stallion. But you might have some problems with distinguishing what platform is okay to jump to or not. And in combat some areas will lock you there until you have fought on an incoming horde of enemies, this prompting you to having to quickly figure out what enemy to take out first. The first general you face is Lord VHS, and if you now just sit there, what in the world is a VHS? Pause this video, google it, and then continue with this one. Are you done? Great, let's continue. If you at any time sense you have forgotten any skills, you can easily just jump into the menus to see the tutorial again, a really helpful feature that is not common in indie games. The puzzles in Narita Boy is all about finding different symbols placed in different locations so you can travel to the next location. Some could be a bit hard to find and some you might want to even write down so you don't forget them while searching for the others. The in-game music is carefully crafted synth music that invokes the feeling of retro and while exploring the creator's memory, one really surprising and beautiful phenomena is the game and the music shifts to a more dramatic and calm melody. Narita Boy is a work of art when it comes to graphics, and to just give you a glimpse of the dedication of the developers, just listen to this. The game is a handcrafted beautiful experience where every asset of the game is individually designed and then painted. That means that over a thousand assets and over 300 stages are all painted one by one. 
with more than 20,000 animation sprites, the game really shows everything in a smooth and fluid motion, no matter how you move about. The game wants you to experience the old CRT display by having scan lines on the screen. This is a feature of course that you can turn off if you don't like it, but it adds a bit of a blur to the picture that can affect your view of the beautiful pixels in the background. Narita Boy is an ambitious game that mixes an entertaining story with fantastic graphics. With that being said, the game gives you around 6 to 8 hours of gameplay depending on how much you search for those hidden secrets. And with a price of almost 30 US dollars, it's up to you to figure out if this audiovisual narrative game is actually worth the cost. Its biggest selling point is the 80s visuals ramped up to the max, bundled with a score that is truly a masterpiece. But it's also a game that will leave you with an ending almost designed for a follow-up, and where some enemies can appear like a clone of a previous one with only some added momentum and appearance. And for some areas it's more of running on a flat surface more than actually jumping between different platforms. And if you think that the poster for the game feel recognizable, how about you Google Tron and look at the movie poster? Intentional or not, they have a resemblance. But you know what, let's not end this journey here. We have talked about the story, the gameplay and the soundtrack and also what you will get if you decide to buy this game and play it. So to give you a chance to experience even more amazing indie games, I've added another video that I think that you will love to the upcoming end screen. So I will see you there and until next time, stay safe and stay awesome.